Well hello everybody and welcome to Jeff's Baking Blog. Today I'm going to be making some English muffins. When I was a child these were simply known in England as muffins but with the advent of those sweet cakey things that we enjoy so much these days uh, they, uh, the old-fashioned muffin which originated in England in the 18th century I think in the th that's the first recorded recipe in a book um, are now known as English muffins. So they're quite easy to make but they take a bit of time and they're not baked in the oven uh, instead they're baked uh, in a heavy skillet frying pan or on a, a griddle. So I go on to the ingredients and for the ingredients I have 300 grams which is two cups of bread flour that's based on scooping packed flour into a 250 milliliter cup. I have 170 milliliters, which is uh, three quarters of a cup minus two tablespoons of lukewarm milk. I have uh, one tablespoon, 14 grams of butter, a teaspoon of salt, uh, four teaspoons, 15 grams of sugar, and uh, I have six grams, which is equal to two teaspoons of uh, instant yeast. You could use just a, a single packet of yeast which is slightly more than that I think. I also have one medium egg which would be large in the USA and I've broken that up a little bit and I just thought I'd put a muffin that I made yesterday on there so you could see what um, they should turn out like if I do them correctly again today. So the first thing I'm going to do uh, is just to put my um, butter into the milk and the egg into the milk. I'm going to give that a bit of a stir around. The butter is at room temperature or it's softened um, but I'm actually just going to put it into the milk to get it that little bit softer because the milk's warm. And then I'm going to put the sugar and the salt into the flour and I'm going to mix that around as well. It doesn't have to be very much because it will get mixed in the stand mixer. You can do this by hand but I always find that making dough is so much easier in a stand mixer. So I'm going to put the flour, the salt and the sugar into my bowl and I'm going to um, sprinkle the yeast over the top of it like that and then I'm simply going to pour the wet ingredients in and then I'm going to turn that on with the dough hook um, on a low speed just until it's all incorporated then I'm going to increase the speed to medium and I'm going to knead it uh, for maybe up to 10 minutes until I have um, a soft smooth uh, stretchy dough. It's not going to be uh, completely dry and completely smooth. Um, this is going to be a soft dough but uh, that will, I'll show you what it looks like after 10 minutes. So you can see that's now come together into a sort of shaggy type of dough. So I'm going to increase my speed to medium and knead it for about 10 minutes. So that's been kneading for about 10 minutes and I'm actually going to take that out and put it into a greased um, bowl or it's a bowl with a little bit of oil in it which I've wiped around the bowl. I should also mention, I forgot to mention, this here is some semolina. You could use polenta or you could use cornmeal. 
that's going to go onto a baking tray for uh, the dough to stand on once we've cut out the muffin shapes, the English muffin shapes. So I'm going to um, take this dough out and I'm going to put some flour onto my hand as well just to help that process when I need to. As you can see it's quite smooth and it's um, soft but it's still quite sticky. I just want to scrape the bowl down and I've used a little bit of flour, um, very little but uh, it's just to stop it from sticking to the counter too much. You don't really need to shape this into a ball to prove it but that's what I'm going to do. I'm sure you could just tip it in and leave it to, to prove. So I'm just going to pick this up and roughly shape it into a ball. like that and then I'm going to put it into my greased bowl top side down first of all and then I'm going to turn it over that's just to coat it in um, oil so that it doesn't form a skin as it proves and then I'm going to take some plastic wrap and place that over the top like that and I'm going to leave that in a warm place that is draught free for at least an hour um, maybe longer until it has uh, doubled in size and once it's doubled in size I'll come back and we'll go on to the next step which will be to degas it and then uh, make our uh, muffin shapes for a second proof so I'll be back once this is doubled in size so it's been just over an hour now and my dough has just about doubled in size I think so I'm going to tip that out onto a floured work surface and roll it out just a little bit and then I'll cut it out. That's good. So I'm going to just pat it down to knock the air out a little bit and then I'm going to just flour the top um, so that I can roll it that little bit easier. And I want to get about eight out of this. So I'm not rolling too thinly. And I'm going to uh, cut them out using uh, a three and a half inch or a nine centimeter cookie cutter. And I will re-roll to get the remainder. I'm going to take each one and I'm going to put it onto my baking tray which I have sprinkled with uh, semolina 
and these are quite soft so I'm going to use a a little cookie spatula to pick them up. So there are my eight rolled out. This last one is a bit rougher um, but I'm going to cover those and I think these are a bit thinner than this one here but they should still be okay. I'm going to cover them and I'm going to allow them to rest for another 30 minutes and they should rise up a little bit during that time and they will then rise more when they're being cooked on the griddle. So I'll be back in about 30 minutes when we're ready to cook them. So I have my griddle uh, on a, a low to medium heat. I want it on a low heat but I don't think um, it will cook through properly so I've put it on a medium. If I was doing it in a, a skillet or a frying pan I would have it on a very low heat. So what I'm going to do is to take the muffins and I have now sprinkled um, semolina on the top of each one as well and I'm going to put them onto the griddle and I'm going to leave them for seven minutes without touching them. And then after seven minutes, they should have turned a nice dark brown color underneath and they will need to be turned over and cooked for seven minutes on the other side as well. So they've got to turn a, a dark color, a sort of, t and you may get a, a, a toasty aroma coming up, but you don't, don't want a, a burnt aroma at all. So it's now been seven minutes and I'm going to turn them over and that has gone a darkish colour. And I'm going to leave them for another seven minutes. So it's now been another seven minutes and I'll turn one over and have a look. So yes that seems to have coloured quite nicely as well. So they should be cooked right through. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take them off the uh, griddle and I'm going to put them onto a wire rack and I'm going to allow them to cool down. And when they've cooled down, I'll come back and we'll take a look inside them. So I've let the muffins cool down and um, I've uh, cut one open and I've toasted half of it um, just on the, the, the open surface and I've put some butter on it, which is now melting. This is what it looks like. Whoops. So I'll have a quick taste of this. Mm. There is nothing quite like a muffin, an English muffin. has that lovely texture, the open texture, uh, when you uh, break into it. And I'm going to show you how you should break into them. Some people slice them, but that's not the way to get the, the nice open texture basically. So I'll show you that now. You simply take a muffin and you take a fork and you squeeze the tines of the fork into the muffin all the way around. Like that. And then it should pull open, just like that. And you have that lovely texture there then. So that's going to be it for this recipe and I hope you've enjoyed it. And if you have, please give me the thumbs up below 
and click to subscribe to my YouTube channel. In the top right hand corner of the screen there will be an eye that you can click on and that will take you to a link for the recipe and I'll put a link below the video as well. And I'll be back with another recipe in the very near future. So until then, happy baking.